Hey gang, it's learning time. It's a bit rainy, I'm in my shed. I had no else to film this. But we are going to be learning about Varistelka's uh, 80 CR V2 steel. So, it's in the um, Tarava Yakari Puko knife. A um, lot of interest in the steel. People ask, oh, can you do a steel test? Of course I will do a steel test. I will do lots of steel tests. So, 80 CR V2, a German steel. I'm getting my information from the Z-Knife Steel app. I didn't make this stuff up. So these are just the stats and the things that this app, which seems to be pretty well regarded, says. So, carbon level, 0.75 to 0.85. Vanadium level, 0.15 to 0.25. Chromium level, 0.4 to 0.6. And then trace elements of molybdenum, a reasonable amount of manganese, so 0.3 to 0.5. Some niobium, some phosphor, some silicon very much small amounts. So, what steel is, is it similar to chemically? Right, so according to this app, it is fairly similar to O1. O1 has a bit more carbon, 0.85 to 0.1. It has some tungsten in it as well. So this steel does not have tungsten in it. Uh, so tungsten, also called wolfram, uh, O1 has 0.4 to 0.6 of that, and O1 has 0.3 of vanadium too, and the same amount of chromium, 0.4 to 0.6. So O1 has a little bit more vanadium, and it has tungsten in it, and a little bit higher carbon. Um, and yes, a fair dose of manganese as well. So O1, similar-ish, not crazy close. Uh, 3V, how similar is 3V? Someone fairly um, rudely uh, suggested this was like 3V diet. 3V is fairly different. It's got uh, 0.8 carbon, so similar-ish carbon. It's got tungsten, which this one doesn't. It has 2.75 to 3% vanadium, which is a huge amount of vanadium, about 10 times more vanadium than this one has, which is why 3V is such an edge-holding and you know, re relatively decent beast in terms of forming carbides. It has 7.5% chromium, so much more chromium as well. Molybdenum, 1. Point, so very much different steel chemically. I'm sorry to say, my rude friend, um, that it is chemically rather different to 3V. I and mean, then make this up, this is just what it is. Uh, and it is fairly similar chemically, and according to this app, fairly, similarly chem fairly similar chemically to 1095 Crovan. 1095 Crovan has uh, 0.95 to 1.1% carbon, so it is higher carbon than this stuff. But it has the same rough amounts of vanadium, chromium, molybdenum, manganese, similar to other stuff. Uh, but you know, this is its own steel. It's not. Uh, if it was 1095 Crovan, it'd be called that, or it'd be also known as. So it is a different steel. I'm just trying to draw on what it is similar to. So that's the chemical boring stuff out of the way. But how are we going to learn about this steel today? Lots of different ways. We're we'll doing some bro science in my shed. Let's have a look at my little bro science setup. So I have my hank of rope and my knife. So this is the this will be the primary way I test the edge retention against abrasives of this and any other steel. So how am I going to test the edge? What sort of edges am I going to test? This is a Scandi ground primary knife, but it has a micro bevel, so not quite in line with my Scandi tests. It is also it's a fairly steep geometry, fairly thick, fairly different. Um, to just call it a workshop test being fine. So I'm going to investigate this from a few different ways. So I will be putting on, first of all, my workshop edge using the workshop kitchen knife guide as I always do. I'll be cutting then uh, rope until it no longer slices paper. And then I'll move on to the next type of angle which is putting a really sharp micro bevel on it as it came from the factory which is now dull from testing with my Tormac. So I'll be putting like a pretty standard like you know 19 or 20 degree micro bevel on it, maybe even a bit higher. Uh, and then we'll see how that cuts with the rope. And then I'll be scandifying it, so getting rid of the micro bevel entirely on stones. So I'll, wear, I'll be using the DC4 to quickly remove the micro bevel and flatten it all out. Then I'll be using a 750, 1000, 4000 grit stone, and then a strop. And then we'll see how much rope the scandy cuts. But that's not all. After that, we will be doing rust testing and I will do some more toughness testing as well. So this should be a half decent video. Let's, um, let's start learning about 80 CRV2.
um, compelling enough stuff, I um, did a three-way edge retention test. So I did a um, workshop 20 degree microconvex, which cut 100 times. And then I did a uh, Tormek micro bevel, or just a standard bevel really, it wasn't as micro as I was hoping, but anyway, uh, that was at 21 degrees per side, and that cut 115 times, which was really, really cool. Uh, and then a, um, a sort of a Scandivex, I guess, which is generally what you get if you're not the best um, manual stone sharper in the world. So, um, very strong edge. Uh, with me, it didn't hold the edge for as long though, so it probably went strength over everything else, because um, it probably did perform quite a gradual curve if I was like mechanically and my table was stable enough and I had the full kit to, and the most importantly, the capacity to do a perfect Scandi grind, it might've been different, but I'm sorry to say, I don't quite have it there just yet with my manual sharpening skills. But anyway, the knife will cut regardless of the edge, as long as it starts off, you know, paper slicing sharp, the knife seems, it seems like it's gonna cut from between 96 to 115 times through rope. So that's much better than a lot of your other basic carbon steels. This one does have some extra stuff in it, as we spoke about at the start. Um, its performance was about in line with the really good O1 from Forrest Tyndall, for example. So it is a very, very good um, edge retaining carbon steel, for sure. Uh, the other attributes I tested were um, sharpenability, which was throughout that whole process. This is a great knife to sharpen. It's got that perfect level of still being removed quick enough on standard stones to make it sort of not a painful experience to sharpen, but also um, it's not so soft that it sharpens really rapidly and you can muck up your blade by accidentally missteering it a few times. Um, because I did, I accidentally bit into my um, final stone a couple of times and it's not so um, soft that it rolled it or dented it. So it's got some endurance to it, which is good. So sharpenability is about what I would like for sure. Uh, then I attached to the edge stability and I did that just by uh, clacking it into my, um, my eaves, my window sills. Um, just on the side of the house, so just stone versus knife. And of course that's gonna chip out the blade. I was happy to see the chips were very, very small. So right in the immediate cutting apex of the knife and that was it. Um, reasonably hard strikes, about what you would expect if you were chopping or working with wood and you went through and hit gravel. Nothing you wouldn't be able to get out with a couple of seconds on a stone, or in my case, a strop, and they're gone. But I show you on the microscope what they actually look like close up as well. So I'd say the toughness is, is just great and just fine. What you would expect from this sort of steel and for this sort of purpose. And the last thing I tested was uh, rust resistance, which not surprisingly, uh, it's pretty poor. So it's not gonna resist rust particularly quickly. That was over about an hour or so um, with just some seawater solution sitting on it. Started bringing out that green and that, that when you switched it over as well, had some proper darker rust spots already. So you're gonna have to keep this one oiled and covered up. Overall, really, really happy with this steel. Um, it's, not so hard and high maintenance that you know, sharpening is gonna be a pain. Yeah, it's not gonna hold its edge for as long as 3V, but it seems like it's gonna hold its edge longer than your basic 1095s and even your Crovan 1095. So this is just from my assessment. Remember, uh, if you wanna see it tested a different way or if you uh, think that my testing is wrong, do it yourself. Go on, have, you, have, you, have your own go at it, um, film your own stuff and put it on YouTube because um, uh, yeah, that's about the capacity of my sharpening skills and all that sort of thing. So by all means, love to see more data. All right, dudes, I'll um, catch you all in the next video. Bye now.